a few months ago, I left my 200K job. Now I'm alone in a foreign country with no income at all. So how and why did I get here? This isn't clickbait. Let me show you guys exactly what I was making. I'm on this site, Levels FYI. It shows tech industry salary data and it's self-reported. So people at the companies uh, report their salaries and it averages out. Personally, I was a software engineer too at Uber. Uh, and as you can see here, the average salary stock and bonus per year. I was actually making a little bit less than this average, but still above 200K when you add all these together um, in a given year. If you guys saw my software engineer salaries are higher than you think video, I actually got promoted since then. Um, so I was making a little more than that video, if you're curious. Um, the stock is what gets bumped up a lot when you get promoted. When I told my team I was leaving back in August, they said, where are you going? Are you going to Google, Facebook, Amazon? Uh, assuming I would be hopping to a different company, which is what most people do after a few years. But I said, no, I'm, I'm just leaving. I'm actually just moving abroad and I don't have a job. My teammates didn't really get it because they were all doing the, the normal thing where you, you work for a few years, you company hop, and then you, know, you just keep living in that way, right? And I, I totally don't blame them. Like that's a reasonable thing to do. And most people fight so hard to get into these companies in the first place that once you're in it, it's kind of like you're good. So what did I leave for? Well, I think it's important not to lose sight of why you got into the game in the first place. You guys might not know this, but I majored in finance and entrepreneurship. And it was kind of funny because here's what they teach you in entrepreneurship. You need an idea and then you come up with a business plan. Then you take that business plan to investors. Those investors give you money and then you can hire developers or uh, start a supply chain or something like that. You essentially pay a bunch of money to have them tell you you can't do anything by yourself. And you all you can really do as a business major is write a business plan. The rest is is out of your hands. I think a lot of people have this have this uh, phenomenon happen to them where they're in their major, they're kind of waiting for, for the big secret to, to come. It doesn't come in the lower level classes and then you wait for like the, the high level elective and you're like, that's where I'm gonna learn everything. But then that day never really comes. And it was the same with my other major finance. I was waiting to learn how to make money like in the stock market, right? But what they tell you at the end of the day, even in the highest level class, they're like, oh, there's, there's actually no way to beat the stock market because computers and algorithms are, um, you know, way faster than any person. So um, yeah, so great. I'm glad I majored in that. What actually got me into programming in the first place was, was just the fact that I didn't have a valuable skill. You know, and once you have a skill like programming that's marketable, scalable, uh, no one can take that away from you. So intrinsically, like you have value as a, as a person in the economy. And for me, I got into it because it was actually a way for me to shortcut the investors and I can actually build the stuff that I wanted to build. But it was a long road before getting good enough to actually do that confidently. So I moved to SF, went to the coding bootcamp, and I think after being there for long enough, I got a little bit of brainwashed to, to thinking that I wanted to work at a, a big tech company. When I heard that the six-figure salary in cash was just the beginning of all the benefits you got, I had no idea you, you got food or stock or any of these other things. So it's like expecting you're gonna get one thing and then the reality is actually twice as good or more. And after a painful interview prep process, which is one of the problems I'm working to solve now, I did get in. And as you know, got into Uber. And when you get in, like, yeah, it is that great. I mean, I, I always say it's the best pay to stress ratio out there. For any similar job, you're either gonna be working 12 hours a day, like investment banking, or you're in medicine and you're dealing with people's lives every day. Writing code is, is nothing like that. And you're getting uh, paid a lot of money to do it. 
And as for going to the big company, like, yeah, I'd recommend that to anyone. It's the best way to get paid to learn. You're getting paid a ton and you are, you're, you're improving your skill that, like I said, no one can take away from you. But I will warn you about something called the golden handcuffs. They make things just a little bit too good for you to leave. For example, the free lunch is, it's not the best food ever, but it's good enough where you're not gonna go pay for food. And it's the same with uh, the salary and the convenience of just all the benefits and uh, the pay is just a little bit too good for you to take a risk. They, they, make, they, they make it real hard to leave. And especially when you're trying to leave and they say things to try to get you to stay, like how about this, how about this? That makes it really, really impossible. Golden handcuffs aside, a few things kind of snapped me out of the, the mentality of comfort. And the first was looking around me. I looked at people five or 10 years ahead of me in their careers and they had pretty much exactly the same life as me. We rode the same train to work. We sat at the same desk in the same chair and we ate the same food every day. For me, and maybe this is me being spoiled or my, my priorities are off, but if I was gonna be doing the same thing for the next five years, I didn't really wanna do it. And again, this comes down to your personality type. For me, I'm kind of a, a person who likes to take a little risk and go for, for more excitement. But if you're a risk averse person, like maybe this is a good thing for you. But for me, it wasn't. The predictability was bothering me a little bit. I wouldn't mind being handcuffed so much, but a few things helped me rediscover my love for entrepreneurship. And if you guys are at all interested in that, you have to check these things out. I found a pretty awesome online community called Indie Hackers. This is the homepage here. It doesn't look like too much, but this is all people posting who are working on uh, their own businesses. A lot of them are bootstrapped, so it's just a one-man operation. And these people either are building side projects as they're working or they've forgone working in the industry entirely and they're just trying to hustle on building a product. So it's kind of like Reddit, it's a forum, but uh, there's a lot more features that are built around kind of this entrepreneurship coding uh, world. So if you're working on anything on the side, this totally motivates you to stay, stay uh, with it, uh, keep going. You post milestones and you see what other people are doing. So it's pretty awesome. The products are also all transparent so you can see people's timeline and then, you know, get inspired by that. Another really great thing about this site is the podcast. So the founder interviews, people are huge in tech and a lot of them bootstrapped and started from zero. It's like 128 episodes. So I would suggest scrolling through these and clicking on the ones that interest you. Maybe you'll want to build a similar product to one of these people or iterate on what they've done. So that is totally awesome. The other thing in kind of a similar vein that inspired me was this dude uh, who's a digital nomad, indie hacker type dude called Peter Levels. Now, this guy inspired a ton of other people too, I know. This guy started by doing something called the 12 Startups in 12 Months Challenge, which when you hear that, that just sounds like incredible, impossible, a bunch of words come to mind. And he did this challenge trying to build a startup every month. Now, he didn't get all the way through, but just him doing that, kind of the mentality of just finishing things, getting them out there, and building cool stuff is something that resonated with a lot of people. And two of those startups went on to become multi-million dollar businesses showing that you can start small and really take off um, if you hit the right chord. So this is Peter's blog, levels.io. No relationship to levels.fyi, just a coincidence. This is definitely worth checking out and uh, it's also worth checking out his, his sites too. Nomad List, this is big one. It's just really cool if you're looking to one day go remote with your job, you can check out different cities um, around the world. And there's reviews on how they're, how they're like to live for uh, a digital nomad. Yeah, it's kind of a cool looking site. So nomadlist.com. So at least for now, here's what I'm doing. I'm living in affordable countries, having a little fun, and building stuff I hope could really help some people out. All that aside, what exactly am I working on? I've got a long list of tutorials that are on the way. We're gonna be building cool stuff in both JavaScript and Python. I'll talk a lot more about the software industry in SF and in general, especially now that I don't have a boss. The big thing I'm working on though is an interview course. 
I remember trying to practice interview problems and being so overwhelmed. There were hundreds out there and I just did not know which ones to study. The explanations didn't make a lot of sense to me. And so I'm releasing a course soon that drills down to the 20 most essential programming interview questions and gives super clear explanations with really good visuals too. It's not done yet, but when it is, I'll put a link down below. And I'm really excited about this one because it's my first huge project and I'm doing it based on a problem I think everyone has. So that's pretty much it guys. Pretty self-centered video, but I guess my point is programming is a tool to kind of like live the life you want, right? Whether that's making a lot of money at a big company, working remotely, or starting your own business. All I have to say is just be careful of the golden handcuffs and remember what your priorities are instead of the people around you. If you want to see where I'm at right now, you can check out my Instagram. It's uh, underscore Aaron Jack, and that's also my Twitter now. And otherwise, those tutorials will be coming soon, so we'll be back to coding. I know I haven't made a coding video in a while, but uh, these ones are going to be really good. All right, guys, I will catch you soon. Hope you're doing well and still coding every day.